Well, just as I did as a DJ in the 90s, I play requests here on my YouTube channel. Had a great response, thank you everyone, to these Windows 11 videos, and I wanted to shoot one now which demonstrates an in-place upgrade and per request on a machine that is not going to pass the upgrade check. So let's give you a proper introduction to the machine that I am going to attempt the Windows 11 upgrade with. Here is that little Wacom unit. What a cutie. Uh, let's go take a look at the resources. So how about the about this PC, if I can type. This is a very small keyboard, so not the greatest for typing. For my old eyes, I'm an old man. Old Man River. All right, enough. Okay, so here it is. Uh, wow, this is an i7 chip. An older, uh, yeah, i7. That is amazing. I can't believe that processor was in this machine that many years ago. Notice just 8 gig of RAM, much more modest RAM. That's the lowest I would personally ever go. Uh, a lot of folks can get away with 4 gig if they're just surfing on the old interweb. All right, what else? Uh, yeah, that's uh, Win 10 Pro currently running, of course, on this Wacom tablet. All right, well, let's see how things go here. I have uh, pulled up for us the Windows 11 website from Microsoft. And if you scroll down uh, towards the bottom, there is the... Uh, PC Health Check app. You can see I've got that right here. We're going to fire it off and we'll see what Microsoft has to say about my plans to do this very early upgrade to Windows 11 on a machine that is running so beautifully right now for me and what I use it for. So I'm going to be very cautious about this upgrade. Uh, I'll be ready to roll back this upgrade at a moment's notice. Because like I said, yeah, this is this is something that I use for work. Uh, the gaming rig, if you've been following all these Windows 11 videos of mine, that rig, obviously, I use for primarily gaming. Microsoft Flight Simulator, specifically in VR, which is the coolest application of VR tech I've seen yet. All right, well, I want to open the PC Health Check. I'm not going to add a shortcut to it. Uh, to the start menu because hopefully I never have to run it again. Uh, here it goes. Oh, how dramatic. Let's check now. Notice it does give me some uh, information about my system. And there we go. I don't meet the requirements. Now you can see why there would be some freak out and some outrage here. All right. First of all, notice this in yellow indication here. Uh, the TPM 2.0 must be supported. This is the trusted platform module chip that might be on your motherboard. It is not on my motherboard. So this comes up as like a warning because on a lot of PCs, you can go in and enable this. It's there. You just don't have it turned on. That's not going to be the case on my system. I definitely don't have it. Now, this one is the one that's shocking for me, and that is that my i7 chip, unfortunately, is not one of the models that is supported. Oh, that is a huge bummer. So the latest, according to Microsoft about this, is that I can still do the Windows 11 upgrade, but it's going to be very much at my own risk type situation. And in fact, they reserve the right to not send me some like security updates and patches because I don't support the TPM 2.0. It's going to be really fun for us to see what happens about my processor here as we attempt to install. So this is definitely going to be interesting and I'll be able to do follow-up videos if I get Windows 11 upgraded in this video. I'll do follow-up videos on, you know, what's going on with the state of my updates and how is the system running.
This is about as close as my channel is ever going to get to a Netflix type drama. All right. Well, as you can see, it's almost done. I am up here uh, downloading the Windows 11 Client Insider Preview uh, and this fancy build. And oh, yeah, just a few seconds left on that download. And then uh, we'll try and get this thing installed in an upgrade fashion, as opposed to the scorched earth approach I did in an earlier video. All right, so the download has finished and I have double clicked the executable inside of the zip. It was the setup executable. And yeah, we will go ahead and allow the updates to be grabbed for the setup from the interweb. So that's the first thing that we need to do here. And it's now checking my PC. I have my fingers crossed here because we know from the health check that there's issues with this PC for this fancy schmancy uh, Windows 11. Okay, look at this. So I can't do it because of this issue. And oh my gosh. So only one option here and that is to close. Well, what to do, what to do? I headed up to Google and I discovered that if we go to HKEY Local Machine System Setup in the Registry Editor and we add a lab config entry and inside we configure these D-word, 32-bit D-word entries, bypass TPM check, bypass RAM check, bypass secure boot check. We set those values to one. Supposedly, now I'm going to meet with success in bypassing the TPM check. Let's try it. So where is my Windows 11 ISO download? There it is. I'm going to launch setup. And here we go on attempt number two. Well, like any good IT guy, I am just not willing to give up this easy. So now what I've done is I've gone up to GitHub and I've downloaded this media creation tool. And I went in and ran this and I said, create a Windows 11 ISO for me that will not check the TPM chip. So that is what is happening now. And on my disk, I now have an ISO that it created. Let me try launching install from there. And it looks like I jumped the gun a little bit. I was just going to look for the ISO and this window popped up showing me that the ISO is being created. If you end up using this media creation tool because you see it work for me, uh, please be aware of the fact that uh, when you launch this tool and you say you want Windows 11, it's going to bring up a Windows 10 setup tool to create the media. Don't be confused by that. You're not setting up a Windows 10 ISO. It is truly a Windows 11 ISO. Well, my goodness, I just ran the setup from that ISO that was created with that script, that, uh, that tool that we can launch, which has a GUI for running it. And we are at Windows 10 on this old system. And check this out. If I go into settings, uh, notice now performance is not as great as it was on that machine I had that met all the requirements. But if we go into Windows Update, we'll see that this machine, in fact, one of the reasons it's running so pokey right now is there's a lot going on, including a cumulative update for Windows 11. So I think what's going to happen here is the updates are going to be flowing down to the system. Those that would influence security around the TPM chip, of course, they're not going to be applied. Microsoft is going to be saying over and over again here that, you know, if you have security problems, it's not our problem. I'm sure you need to upgrade your machine. And of course, when this old Wacom dies, I am going to upgrade it and I'll probably upgrade it, to be honest with one of the Surface books that would allow writing on the screen. So Microsoft's going to get their money in the end when it comes to hardware. But 
I'm very, very happy right now with this old Wacom that is now running Windows 11. I'll be back to do more videos on the health of this machine. In fact, I'll record everything I do to this old machine so you can see it. And oh yes, the mission critical application here of my Epic Pen, yes, that worked after the good old Win 11 upgrade. And I just realized, of course, that my choice of color scheme here is just ridiculously awful. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed this journey to a Windows 11 upgrade on an old unsupported PC.